Well, welcome to question 58 of the Secunda Secunde. Uh, the topic for this uh, lecture is justice in itself and justice within justice in itself. And I am Dr. Tipo. Uh, justice in itself. So we've already looked at right. We're doing justice this time. Next two questions will be injustice and judgment. This one is the longest of all of them. It is 12 articles long. Uh, I actually began this one. I got halfway through it and thought, I just can't do it. I need to move forward to something else and come back to it. So this one is actually I think, perhaps one of the more difficult ones. And you probably see me stumble a bit throughout these slides just because it's so much material. And uh, if you're reading this yourself, or interest or for class and you're trying to get through justice and you just started on 50, question 57 and now you're on to question 58 and you look at this, you might think, uh, maybe I don't want to read uh, the Summa Theologica or maybe I took the wrong class. My, my only advice to you on this would be uh, you know, watch this video uh, for one to get a summary or perhaps skip it and come back to it. Uh, there are a few lessons within it that if you if you know it up front, um, that will make uh, that will make it easier throughout the rest of the questions. But it's not essential that you understand uh, this question um, before you do any of the other ones. Like when you're reading the Bible, people start with Genesis, and then before you know it, they end up in Exodus, and they're still excited. Then they get to Deuteronomy and Leviticus, and they just quit reading the Bible. Sometimes it would be better to jump ahead to the Gospels, and uh, then uh, you're more ready to go back to some of those longer uh, books that aren't quite as narrative-based. This one is kind of similar. Uh, justice defined. Uh, the first question defines justice as uh, the perpetual and constant will to render each one his right. Um, there's another definition that comes up later on, I think question seven. Uh, no. uh, we'll get to it later on. <laughs> See, I told you I already get uh, more confused. Question 11, question, uh, article, yeah, question 11. Uh, you, you'll get end up with uh, uh, another definition, which is probably more common than this one, but to unfold this first article, uh, using a line from St. Isidore, uh, a man is said to be just because he respects uh, the rights, the just, the use uh, of others. Um, so it really is each of these aspects because I'm broken down, so there's going to be a bit of a but it is aimed at uh, the good of the other. This, these individual definitions, uh, St. Thomas throws in there where he talks about the perpetual, uh, which is for the purpose of uh, observing the laws, uh, laws of justice always. So perpetual means always. Um, and constant, uh, uh, firm perseverance uh, in purpose. Uh, it says, one of the objections is, why do you need perpetual and constant? Aren't they the same thing? It's, well, they're not exactly the same thing. Constancy has a sense of firmness. It's an immu Im Im immutableness to it, immovableness to it. Uh, it's like a rock. Uh, being constant is like a rock. Perpetual is more a sense of time. Um, will, and then he also says that constant will. Will deals with voluntariness. You have to choose um, to be just. It's not an involuntary action. One has to choose to be just. Um, and he also describes that justice uh, becomes perpetual when we make a habit out of it, which makes it part of those moral virtues. Because, uh, it comes from us creating a habit, having a habit of justice. That's how it makes it perpetual. A little bit like praying at all times. Uh, the only way to pray at all times is to pray frequently. <laughs> you create a habit of prayer, and then you create a disposition of prayer. Uh, 
you have a disposition of prayer, then everything you do becomes prayer. Similarly with justice, you make a habitus of justice, then you will live perpetually uh, just. Uh, So justice uh, in Article 2 is directed towards another. Now this is a key factor to understanding uh, justice within this whole uh, very long section on justice. So uh, if you're trying to uh, figure out what, what do you need to know from this uh, question 58, Article 2 is an important one. Um, probably number 2 and number 11, those are the two that you really want to have. Uh, justice, uh, by its name, implies equality. It denotes an essential relation to another. Uh, now, it says, does it always have to be justice always towards another? Uh, and the short answer is yes. It's this idea that for it being equal, it has to be equal between two or more things. So if there is only one thing, then there can't be equality among one thing. Because by kind of by, de by definition, all of one thing is equal to that one thing. <laughs> is, uh, is, is cell phone equal equal to what? Right? <laughs> Unless I can say, is the cell phone equal to this cell phone? Now I can answer the question. But is this cell phone equal? Well, yes. <laughs> if you mean, is this equal? Is the cell phone equal to itself? Yes, that's like saying one equals one, right? Uh, it's by definition. Now, people can talk about justice in terms of themselves, but he says, St. Thomas says, that this is really metaphorically speaking, where one is trying to balance one's concusable and irascible appetites. So, uh, when dealing with yourself, when you're trying to rectify your passions into the proper ordering and, uh, or virtues, you might be talking about justice within yourself, but you're talking about a metaphorical justice. Uh, the, the real understanding of justice from St. Thomas is dealing with other people. Other people. Um, this is an essential element of this. If you don't get that it's about other people, this won't make any sense. Uh, the rectitude of the will towards the rights of others uh, uh, this fourth article, um, yes, I did. Uh, justice as a cardinal virtue. So justice uh, regulates human operations. Uh, it renders man's operations good. What is an operation? It's an action uh, to operate in the world, to uh, opera, is to work. Work in the world. Uh, so it regulates our external actions. Um, good men are so called chiefly from their justice, right? If you, t if you say that is a good person, you, what we mean by it, according to Cicero, who um, St. Thomas calls Tully, uh, uh, people, we know people to be good people mostly because of their justice attraction to justice. It says, uh, the luster of virtue appears above all injustice. Uh, and if you think of a good person, you probably are a very just person. As you'll see from later on with the quasi-integral parts of justice, what is uh, a just person? A person who does good and avoids evil. So uh, in that regard, you can see, yeah, most, most of the time when we have a good person, we're talking about people who do good and avoid evil. Uh, if a man does does it voluntarily, uh, that which is necessary, it is still virtuous. Uh, and that becomes a bit of a debate in this section. If it's a necessity, is it still meritorious? Is it still virtuous? Uh, and the answer would be yes, because there's a lot of things which are necessary that which people don't do. <laughs> so just because it's necessary, that's just one more level of it being good. Uh, the rectitude of the will towards the rights of others. Um, article four. Justice cannot be a matter of the intellect and reason alone as a cognitive power. Uh, that is a, a, 
and part of this section. Uh, justice cannot be in be the irascible and the concupiscible as a sensitive appetite. Now this comes up in future questions, so I'm, I'm hesitant to uh, go into all the detail here because it's going to pop up again uh, in the next couple of questions. But it's uh, justice is, is an intellectual thing. Remember from the definition at the beginning, it's an act of the will. Because it's an act of the will, you're talking about uh, a rational appetite. You're talking about in, in the, uh, the, the intellectual appetite. But we're not talking about the intellect, right? We're talking about the intellect. Is, is justice a matter of the intellect alone? No, right? You can know what is the right thing to do. You can know what is the wrong thing to do. Knowing doesn't create the the virtue, right? There's people who know the person uh, is an alcoholic. They know that the alcohol is bad for them, but they might still pick up that drink, right? It's not simply a matter of the intellect, as Plato would think. The Platonists would think if you know something, then you will not do it. But Aristotle and St. Thomas are very clear that People can know what the right thing is, and it doesn't mean they're going to necessarily do it. You need to create a happy truth of it. Um, so intellect alone does not drive justice. Now, how about, so then if it's not the intellect, then it must be the, the sensitive appetites. And again, the answer would be no. The sensitive appetites would be the things that we're drawn to, the things we're emotionally attached to, the things that we desire, um, it's the emotions, right? Is it the intellect or the emotions? Uh, the answer to this is neither. <laughs> it is neither purely the intellect nor the emotions. It is a matter of uh, a rational approach to the emotions, right? So it's 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 a it's both the intellect and the appetite, um, and it's about ra about ordering uh, the emotions to the right uh, truth and. Uh, this sometimes that sometimes justice can be called truth, although I, I haven't really heard that <laughs> said before. But in tr truth is imprinted on the will, um, therefore justice uh, is connected with the truth uh, in, in that appetite. Now, justice as as general and as an individual virtue. So these are all covered, and they're covered in different. So justice directs uh, men in relationship to each other in two ways, in relationship to individuals and in relationship with others in general. Serving the community serves all those in the community. So both of these are, the, the second one in particular is dealing with the general uh, virtue of justice, right? the relationship of the individual to the society, uh, and then in relationship to other individuals uh, is is a particular individual virtue. Um, in a general sense, justice is in every virtue because it's directed towards the other. Right, and he's taking that from Aristotle. Uh, legal justice is sometimes called this general justice, legal justice, because it's in a general way towards the common good, right? the way the law is directing society towards the common good, um, in contrast to particular in, in between two individuals. Um, uh, legal justice is whereby man is in harmony with the law, which directs the act of all the virtues to the common good, uh, can be called a general vir virtue. So. Uh, if, if if one is saying, oh, I'm going to be charitable, but it doesn't direct us towards the common good, then your charity might not be that good, right? Like somebody could be merciful. Oh, this person is a murderer, but let's be merciful. Let them go. And they go out and they murder five more people. Well, your mercy was not good. Well, why isn't it good? Because it created an injustice. So justice, in some ways, um, guards all the other virtues. Uh, 
virtue directs the other virtues towards the common good, which is very important for uh, Aquinas. Uh, this idea of the common good is more important than the individual good. So it's very nice that you're merciful, but how about other people in society? The other people, you know, the greater good, the common good is more important than the individual good. That might not be too uh, popular today, but uh, that's St. Thomas's view. So, and he would call that type of legal justice. So that legal justice is kind of this um, general justice. It's a general virtue, right? Uh, it's general virtue in two ways. Uh, other virtues are predicated upon justice. Uh, if they aren't just, they aren't virtues, right? So as I described, if somebody decided that they were going to be merciful, like let go the murderer, um, and they go out and murder other people, well, that mercy wasn't predicated upon justice, therefore it is not virtuous after all. Um, and ju justice, insofar as it directs man to the common good, is the same as all virtue, uh, legal justice, as, as an example. So, um, all virtue must be directing man towards the common good, according to St. Thomas. Uh, uh, therefore, since every, if prudence done well aims man at the common good, and charity done well aims man at the common good, and uh, piety, uh, aims man at a common good, then all of these are, uh, and all of these are in some ways rooted in justice. So uh, this is a, a big, big uh, umbrella of justice. Particular, uh, the particular virtue of justice. So compared to the, the common good, uh, which was legal justice, the big, big, big example have also particular justice. So uh, legal justice directs man to the common good, general virtue. But then it's, a, it's also a particular virtue because um, it directs man it directs man in relation to, to other individuals, which we later on call mutative justice, the relationship between individuals within society. Uh, this is a particular virtue. So although legal Virtue directs man towards the common good uh, immediately, he says, uh, and to the individual immediately. I never heard that anybody say ever immediately before. It's always immediately, but he says immediately, which means like a, with mediation, right? So uh, if, if legal good, le uh, legal justice directs uh, man to the common good immediately, and to particular individuals within that society mediated through the good of uh, the common good, uh, there would also need to be uh, a virtue which directs uh, justice towards uh, the individual immediately <laughs> without mediation. Uh, and uh, this would be things like fatherhood or husband or mother, wife, or boss, um, these are direct relationships, right? Uh, the relationship between a father and a daughter is a direct relationship. So you don't have a relationship with your daughter through the common good of society. Well, you know, a utilitarian might, right? Utilitarians look at trying to be impartial and disconnected uh, and looking at the, the greatest good for the greatest happiness for the greatest amount of people. Well, how about your own daughter? Um, she's kind of part of the greater good. Um, no, this is, uh, there, there's particular relationships that have particular goods and particular justice, which is required for that particular relationship. So the, re so the particular justice owed between a husband and a wife is different than the justice owed between uh, a person and their neighbor across the street, uh, a person and their employer. These are different relationships. It's not a generalized good. It's an individual particular good. So um, the particular is, it is both a general and a particular virtue. Uh, he says it also has special matter. So it's not just willing the good overall, 
right? It's not just aiming at the good in every way, right? It, it's it's fairly particular how justice works. Justice works in rectifying external actions. So remember, justice is about actions, not about dispositions. It's not an app. It's not a sensitive appetite. It's not about your emotions or your desires or your lust or you know, the things you want. It's, it's not about that. It's about how do you act in public. You know, if a person is uh, uh, desiring uh, chocolate cake or something uh, during Lent, uh, the person might have a sensitive appetite issue, uh, a moral virtue issue, but it's not, um, it's irrelevant to justice. Justice would be, did you eat the cake? It doesn't matter how you feel about the cake. Did you eat the cake? So it's about the external actions, um, not about the inner disposition, uh, unlike the sense of that. Um, therefore, it has a special matter. Its matter exists in the external world, not the internal world, whereas most virtues actually exist on the internal sense. Right? Uh, things like prudence, right? It's entirely interior. Uh, temperance, entirely interior. Um, justice, exterior. It's an exterior. Um, this justice is directed towards others. This is not about uh, the entire matter of moral virtue, but about the external actions and the things. Uh, the things are another part. The things that you can use. Um, again, all external. Justice is about operations. Another one of these kind of fancy and uncommon words, operations, but it's no different than everything I just had been saying. Operations meaning opera, to work, you know, external works. Um, movements of the sensitive appetites are called passions. Uh, justice is not a function of the sensitive appetite. It's a rational or intellectual appetite. So therefore, justice is not, uh, uh, it, Justice is not under the passions. It's not a passion because it's not a sensitive appetite. Uh, justice about, is about right relationship with another, not about passions, right? Temperance, prudence, dealing with the passions. Justice, not dealing with the passions, dealing with uh, operations or external actions. In other words, operation. The mean of justice, uh, another kind of interesting one, and we're approaching the end, so excitingly interesting. Uh, the mean of justice is to be taken according to uh, arithmetical uh, proportions so that it is a real mean. Um, and what he means by what is a real mean? Um, the passions uh, are about comparison, uh, comparisons uh, with a virtuous man and not proportions. So if you're dealing with what is the prudent thing, you're dealing in very gray areas. Uh, you're dealing with very um, non-precise um, emotions, uh, sensitives, you know, they're sensitive uh, matters. So that they're going to be dealing with non-specific things, right? If you were to say to somebody, uh, are you happy or are you sad? Or how sad are you? you no, know, we try to come up with these things. Like on a, we can do it with pain, like on a scale of one to ten. You know, we show pictures of smiley faces and sad faces. Like, where's your pain level? We're, we're trying to put uh, a number on something that is emotional. Uh, very difficult to do. Justice, however, uh, Saint Thomas says, is not. Uh, uh, a comparison you know, better than this or worse than that, right? That, that's, that's something of the emotions, better and worse. Um, dealing with proportions as a real mean, there's an exact, there can be an exact number, right? So if I buy a car for $10,000, a used car for $10,000, well, how much do I owe? $10,000, <laughs> right? It's an exact number. 
right? It, it's an exact number. You say, well, how much is twice that? How much is half of that? $5,000, right? We're dealing with something that's actual, right? There's an actual, real um, uh, number connected with justice because we're dealing with external operations again. So, you know, if you were building a school, well, how many people will be in the school? 500 students. Well, we're not talking uh, more than or less than more than this school, less than that school, 500, 500, <laughs> right? There's going to be 500 chairs. There's going to be 500 lockers. There's going to be 500 uh, spots. You know, how many teachers are you going to need? You know, you can break down an exact number. It's not more than or less than. It's not a feeling. Uh, these are, we can do exact things. Um, because we're dealing with external operations. Um, because of that, because we're dealing with the external world, we're dealing with things that have material value. Because things have material value, you can calculate them, right? You can have a mathematical um, calculation of the things you're talking about. So justice is dealing with those practical um, things, you know, and, and this does deal with justice and injustice. You know, how many students will be in a classroom is a matter of justice and injustice, right? These, these are real numbers and they have real consequences. Now this, I brought this up at the beginning, but question 11, now this is the one where this line from St. Ambrose is almost more popular than the definition in Article 1, which is, uh, it is justice to render to each one his own or each one his due. What does, what does somebody, what is due to this person? And then that is what we must render to them. Um, so what do we have to render to the government? That's a matter of justice, right? If it's money, if it's service, um, whatever that might be. Um, but this is a matter of justice. Did you pay your taxes or did you not pay your taxes? Did you serve or did you not serve? Um, uh, this will be different than what you will say, what do you, uh, what is owed to the church? That's something entirely different, right? Uh, some level of devotion and missionary activities, some type of perpetuation of the mission of the church. Uh, this is what's due to the church. Or what is due to your mother and father? Piety, and there's other things that are due to them. Um, what is due to God? Devotion, right? The adoration, Thanksgiving, these other, uh, these other virtues, right? So, uh, giving each one their due will depend on the relationship. Uh, everyone is not due the same thing. Right? And in our society, we tend to try to think about everything. It must be entirely equal for all people. But this is different. Right. This is everybody must get what is equal, depending upon their status, depending on what is due to them, um, depending on what we, we owe to them, uh, depending on the relationship. Uh, so this is a, a kind of an interesting one. So throughout this section, particularly when we get to the potential parts of justice, um, uh, the ones of religion. Um, and then when we get to language, when it comes to truthfulness and uh, dealing with money, with uh, liberality, uh, this is what is due, what is due to society, what is due to God, what is due to our neighbor. Um, and this depends, you know, there's no one answer. It depends on the relationship. Okay. Getting there. 12 uh, is virtue the, is justice the foremost among all virtues well if it's not it's very high <laughs> um, legal justice stands foremost among all the moral virtues or uh, the most common good transcends uh, the indiv individual good of one person that's a line um, from Tully yeah from Cicero 
the most, the most excellent of the virtues would seem to be justice uh, and more glorious than either the evening or the morning star. Aristotle holds justice very high. Uh, and, uh, not only in terms of the general good, legal justice, as you pointed out at the beginning, which is the highest good, but even particular justice, right? There's two types of justice. There's that legal justice for the general good, and then there's particular justice, and particular justice uh, is also very highly exalted. So uh, it's more, it's for, because St. Thomas says it's because it's from the more excellent part of the soul than temperance and, and uh, prudence. So temperance and prudence, they might be, they're rooted in the appetite, the uh, sensitive appetite, they're rooted in the passions. Uh, he considers that lower than existing in the rational appetite, more closely connected with the intellect. Right, the will. Um, this is a, a more sophisticated and more human. Uh, it's the part which we share most closely with God, the will, uh, the voluntary, uh, more excellent part of the soul. So therefore it is a higher, it's a very high virtue. Um, and even in terms of it not being legal justice, Still, the, the primary focus of justice, even when we're talking about particular justice, justice between individuals, um, we're still looking at justice as rendering to another what is due to them. Um, we're still looking at the good of the other, and the, the good of the other is still a higher um, ideal than just simply looking after yourself it does add to the common good the, and the common good is more important than the individual so that is uh saint thomas uh, and, and final you know the conclusion i typically do a run through of the questions again and answers this one's a long one because it's 12 articles long but um, justice by definition is the pet perpetual and constant will to render to each one his right you can see how Question Article 11 is very similar to that. Um, right, question 11, uh, Article 11 was, the proper act of justice is nothing else than to render each one his own. Very similar. Uh, justice is directed to the common good. Right? This is easy to understand. Justice regulates human operations, right? We talk about external actions. Uh, justice is an act of the will, which is part of the rational appetite. Most of the other virtues we're dealing with are dealing with the sensitive appetite. So the justice is part of the rational appetite, which is an interesting characteristic. Uh, justice is a general virtue, as it explains. You know, um, legal justice uh, is dealing with the common good, uh, applies to all, so therefore it's part of this general good general virtue. Uh, legal justice can be given to every to every virtue so much as they are directed to the common good. So because the primary focus of justice is to aim at the common good, any virtue which also aims at the common good also is part of justice as well. Um, there is a particular and, and, and general justice. So we already talked about general justice with legal justice. Uh, to the common good. There is also particular justice, you know, the justice between individuals, uh, especially those who have particular relationships. Uh, justice between, a particular ju justice could be between husband and wife, or a person and their neighbor, or employer or employee, uh, these are particular uh, relationships. Uh, justice is about the will, not the passions obvious because we're dealing with the rational appetite, not the sensitive appetite. Sensitive appetites deal with the passions. Uh, the mean of justice is a, a real mean because we're dealing with operations. We're dealing with the external world. Um, because of this, we can quantify the external world. We can, we can quantify operation. How many hours? Where is it? You know, where? When? Uh, these are tangible things. How much? These are external operations. 
um, so we can quantify them, uh, unlike the sensitive appetites, which is uh, more based on the passions and the emotions. How much do you love this person? A lot, right? Not as much. <laughs> We're talking about lesser or more. It's always a matter of comparison. Uh, the real mean is dealing not with comparisons, but with actual actual quantifiable things more often. More often. Um, the proper act of justice is nothing else than to render each one his own, very similar to the first one's definition. And justice is the most resplendent of the virtues, more or less, you know, because <laughs> it deals with uh, the good of others. You know, in some ways that makes it a higher good. It aims at the common good. Um, it, it's a uh, it, it, it kind of guides many of the other virtues. If any other virtue is taken to to a too far without a, a, an eye on the common good, they couldn't even become an, a vice, right? You can you can take uh, you can take something too far if you uh, if it's moderated by the common good. Uh, therefore, all virtues then can be held to the standard of uh, justice in as a judge. Uh, you know, we can say something very similar of charity, right? Charity guides all virtues as well. Um, so I hope this was interesting. I know this was a long topic and not always the most fun material, but I think it is important and I'm glad that I finally have done question 58 uh, in question. Nine, we're moving ahead to injustice, which only has four articles, which will be much more manageable, thankfully. Uh, so I'll see you then.